So we've looked at a, at a number of optimization problems now, and they've all been a little on the textbookish side. So what I want to talk about here in this lecture is um, a real, real world situation, something called economic lot size. And the idea here is you, you've got two competing forces within a company, right? Let, let's say uh, you work for, for a manufacturing company. And it's an industry where uh, the, the demand is pretty constant, right? Uh, medical supplies are an, ex are an example. The, the demand for surgical gloves uh, in July is more or less the same as the demand for surgical gloves in November. And let's also assume that you make different sizes, right? So that the, the people on the manufacturing floor, uh, from time to time, they have to kind of reconfigure things to produce uh, a, a different size or a different type of your product. So how do you do this? Well, the, the manufacturing guys are saying uh, it, it, there's a cost associated with reconfiguring the machines. So we want to produce an entire year's worth of supplies all at once. January 1st, we make everything we're going to need for the year because then we, we only have to set up the machines once. Now, the marketing department, when they hear this, they, they just explode because they're, they come back with, okay, so where are we going to store all of that stuff? It costs money to store all of this material, right? So the, the marketing department solution is every day you produce only as much as you need to ship tomorrow, right? So they're having the, they're having the, um, Manufacturing guys literally reconfiguring the the factory floor on a daily basis because that way you never have to store anything and your shipping costs are zero. And obviously the, these are, are diametrically opposed uh, positions on how to handle this manufacturing. One is saying produce everything at once. The other is saying split it out over the entire year. What we want to do is we want to come up with the lot size, right? How, how many should you produce in a batch in order to minimize both of these costs, right? To minimize both the storage costs and the manufacturing costs, All right? So we, we have some assumptions here, right? This, this, these are the assumptions to the, to the problem. First, you need to produce M units over the course of the year. That's the, that's your total yearly supply of these things. Um, the marketing department is going to tell you what this is. They're going to project this based on last year's sales uh, and, and what they know about the industry going into the current year. The units are going to be consumed or sold at a constant rate. So you have the option of producing them in batches. And we're going to let Q be the size of a batch. Um, producing a batch has a fixed cost. We're going to call that F. Producing a single item costs G. The, the, those F and G, those are both dollar amounts. And once units are produced, they have to be stored until they're ready to be consumed. And the cost of storing a unit is K dollars. Okay. That's a lot of information. All right. So what, what I've done here. Okay. So what I've done here is I, I've just I've stripped this down a little bit. I've just summarized all of the variables that we outlined in, in the previous slide, uh, and I've made some room for myself, right? So room to do the calculations. So what I want to do is I am trying to minimize the total cost. And our total cost has two components. There's the production cost, and there's the storage cost. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to rewrite that right-hand side in terms of our variables. So um, let's think about the production cost first. I'm going to come over here off to the side um, and kind of work through this. Um, the cost of one batch, right? What's the cost of one batch? Well, there's the fixed cost. That, that's the cost of just setting up the production floor. Plus, let's see. Um, I know that 
a single unit costs G dollars per unit. So that's G. And if I multiply this by units per batch, that's Q, I get dollars per batch. Okay, so that, that is my total cost of a single batch. Now, to get this up to the, to the total production cost for the year, I need to multiply this by the number of batches. So how many batches are, how many runs are we going to do? Well, I know there's M, think about units if, if it helps here, right? There's M units per year. And if I, and let's see, Q is units per batch. So if I divide these, if I divide M by Q, think about what the units do, right? Units per year divided by units per batch gives me batches per year. And that's what I was looking for. Okay, so now um, I can talk about the total production cost. Right, the total production cost is the number of batches, that's M divided by Q, times the cost per batch, which is F plus G Q. Now let, let, let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Let, let's distribute, right? This is M F over Q plus, uh, the Qs are going to cancel here, and I'm left with M G. Okay, that's my production cost. Okay, now let, let's step back again. Right now, let's think about the storage cost. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that um, the products are, are used, the products are sold or shipped out at a constant rate, right? If they're shipped out at a constant rate, then the average time, uh, the, the average number that we have being stored at any given moment is going to be, let me write, average number of stored units, oops, stored units at any given moment is going to be uh, the number we produced, Q, divided by 2. That, that is the average number of units in storage, and the, and the cost of storing a unit is k right so this is the number of units and if we multiply that by the storage cost per unit we'll get um, the storage cost right so that would be plus uh, k q divided by 2 I'm gonna copy this down here k q divided by 2 and there's my formula this this is the formula for the total cost, and, and I want to emphasize something about this. M is a constant; it's a it's a number. We know how much that is. The marketing department told us. F is also a constant. the The production de department can tell us exactly how much it's going to cost to set up that production floor. Uh, G is a constant, and K is a constant. The only variable. On the right hand side of that equation is Q. The only thing we don't know in advance is the size of a batch. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to emphasize that, right? I'm going to write it this way. I'm going to say T of Q equals that formula. And now we're home free, right? What do I want to do? I want to I want to optimize T. I, I want to minimize it, right? Well, how do we do that? Well, we differentiate and then set the derivative equal to zero. All right, so I'm going to do that, right? And, and I'm just going to rewrite this real quick. I'm going to rewrite this Q. I'm going to make this MFQ to the negative first plus MG plus KQ divided by 2. And now we can find the derivative. T prime of Q is negative MFG to the negative second plus mg is a constant. Derivative of a constant is zero. Plus derivative of kq divided by two 
is just k divided by 2. Excellent. Now, again, right, um, got a little weird. This should be a q, not a g. Couldn't, couldn't read my own writing. Okay, set it equal to 0 and solve this for q. I move the k over 2 over minus m f. And that, let's, let's fix that negative exponent over q squared equals negative k over 2. And the minus signs cancel. I multiply both sides by negative 1. Then cross multiply. 2 m f equals k q squared. q squared is 2 m f divided by k and finally take the square root of both sides q equals the square root of 2 m f over k and there's our formula right, that is our formula for for calculating what is called the economic lot size right the the most economic size right the the size um that benefits us the most economically that minimizes our costs and uh, a, couple of, a couple of things I want to point out, because some interesting things happened here. Um, well, one interesting thing, notice that um, the production cost doesn't matter. right? There is no G in our final formula. It disappeared when we took the derivative. right? So it, it doesn't matter how much it costs us to, to produce a unit. That's not a factor in our final result. Okay, now I, I really don't want to belabor how to use this. I mean, it's a formula, right? You substitute numbers in. To simplify your calculator um but th there is one kind of interesting point all right so let, let's look at this in, at this example you, you see we, we've been given all the all the key pieces of information we have the number of cases that have to be produced in a year we have uh the storage costs we have the fixed cost of production and we have the variable cost of production the cost per case all right, so first, let, let me uh, write out our formula. M, uh, excuse me, we're, we're trying to find Q, right? Uh, Q equals the square root of 2MF over K. So now, now let's, let's sort out our variables. We know M. M is 1,000. That's the total annual production. F is the fixed cost. That's... 50 k is uh the storage cost that's 50 and g is the variable cost that's 16. so let's put these in here square root of two times a thousand times 50 divided by 50 and the 50s are going to cancel right my calculator tells me this is let's see uh 44.72136 and now now we have a little bit of a dilemma uh you can't go to the production team with that number they're not going to produce 72 hundredths of a case for you you got to go to them with an integer amount okay so what do we do do we round this up or do we round this down well i, I don't know you know you, you you, you hopefully you, you've seen in, in previous business examples business situations sometimes you always round one way or the other right if, if you're trying to minimize costs for example you you might always round down because rounding down means your costs are a little below your target or rounding up meant your costs were a little above and going over is not okay where going a little under is well here i'm, I'm not sure what to do Right. If I remember, this is um, the number of units per batch. If, if I round this up, then that means I'm going to be producing fewer batches, which means my storage costs are going to go up. So you might think, oh, OK, round down. But if I if I round down, then I'm producing more batches. And my production, my, my configuration costs go up. So what do you do? Well, in, in a case like this, really, we, we have to go back to the formula. Remember, our formula for the total cost 
was M F over Q plus M G plus K Q over two. What we need to do is we just need to test both values, right? I'm, I'm going to round up and say, what is the total cost of producing 45 cases? I'm going to round down and say, what is the total cost of producing 44 cases? All right, well, let, let's see. On my formula, if, if I put my numbers in, right, this is 1,000 times 50 divided by Q plus MG. That's 1,000 times 16. That's 16,000 plus uh, uh, K is 50. So this is 50 divided by 2. That's 25 Q. I'm going to put 45 and 44 into that formula. And if you do, you get 18 236.11 for 45. Remember, these are dollars. And 44 gives me 18 236 36. Okay, not much of a change. Right, not much of a change, but uh, if, if you're producing a lot of batches, it, it, it can start to add up, right? So um, it's worth going to the trouble. And my, my answer here uh, this is the smaller of the two total costs. So my answer would be, we are going to produce 45 cases per batch. Right? And, and from there, let, let's say, because um, this is what the production people are going to ask, uh, how many cases are we going to, how many batches are we going to produce? Well, we have to produce 1,000 cases altogether. 1,000 cases divided by 45 cases per batch, uh, let me see if I can grab my calculator, um, 1,000 1, divided by 45. Uh, this is 22.2 batches. Okay, I know we ended up with the decimal again. Um, so, so what's my answer? Uh, we're we're going to produce 23. Right. In the end, we're going to produce 23 bat. Uh, we're, we're going to produce 22 full batches, and at the very end of the year, uh, they're going to have to crank out one partial batch. Right. So uh, th that's that's how you handle that's how you handle rounding, right? In in this particular application. So in the next lecture, uh, we're we're going to continue. We we've got uh, some more uh, applications to look at. We're going to look at something called related rates. Right. The uh, the idea here is what if we have two variables, like, like the area of a circle and the radius of a circle, and they're both changing with respect to time. For example, you have, you have uh, ripples in water, right? The circle is getting bigger and the radius is getting bigger. Like can, we, can we come up with a way to, to find a relationship between the rate of change of the area and the rate of change of the radius?